What is your main motivation for starting a business? Do you have dreams of creating a six-figure business? Well, what if I told you there was a huge creator that not only built a six-figure business, she built a seven-figure business. In fact, she got up all the way to $8 million a year, but last year she ended up shutting down that business and completely walking away. Today, we're gonna look at Vanessa Lau and her return to YouTube, what she learned being off social media for a year and what's next for her business. Welcome back to the Cypress Room, where we dive deep on influencing with integrity. I'm Meggie Honeycutt. And I'm Christina Mascari. And we are doing something different today because I have been inspired by Vanessa Lau's story. And if you don't know who she is, we're going to give you a little bit of context about her. But you know from the intro, she built this huge business and stepped away for a full year. And she just came back this week to YouTube. And I didn't even know she was gone, but her video that I watched pulled me in. I shared it with Maggie and I was like, I would love to do a reaction podcast to this video because there's so many good nuggets in it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Yes. We're going to be looking at a woman who built a seven figure business and not only a seven figure business, but I think at her height, $8 million per year is what yeah. she was generating. Yeah. And she just got to a point where she walked away. So we're going to be talking all about that, going in the ins and outs of what she learned along her journey, what we think about what she's learned, what we can glean from what she's learned. Um, so I just like want this to be an encouragement to you that never stop learning. Like Maggie and I are constantly yeah. looking and searching these things out to keep learning about this creator economy because there's just no textbook for it. It's constantly evolving, constantly changing. So I'm excited about this conversation today. What do you think? It's a little different for us. It is a little different for us, but <laughs> I I think it's good to take a piece of content like this and see what can we pull out of it and implement into our own journey in the creator space. Because I think something that this space requires is that willingness to learn mm -hmm. and to be constantly learning, to be flexible. It's so ever-changing. So to be able to look at somebody like Vanessa Lau, who was at the pinnacle of what we would from the outside see and wow, $8 million a year. How could you ever walk away from that? Um, and to hear her explain why I think is fascinating and lots of lessons we can take from it. So yeah, we've both watched this twice. So we have different sections that we're going to play from her podcast instead of us, just her video that she put up on YouTube this week instead of us just reciting it to you. I think it would be better to see it in first person. But just to give you a little bit of background on her, and I think you're more familiar with this model than I am. I'm just like content creator focused. But what Vanessa Lau did was basically create coaching and masterminds on how to grow your business on social media. So there was always an end goal of selling a course or, you know, doing putting people into this mastermind, having these big ticket items. Are you kind of familiar with this format? Have you seen it more on social media than me? I have seen it a lot on social media, okay. especially in the last year. Um, just this group of creators who their main goal is to draw people in to buy that online course or coaching session or mentorship or join their mastermind. And then they're able, be, when people find value in that, when they learn and more people um, come to buy that course, then they're able to scale it and they actually hire salespeople to go out and recruit even more people. Okay. And that kind of blew my mind when you told me that because I'm just like, I'm over here being creative and creating content and not really thinking about you know, making this big machine that's constantly yes. making money. So it is a little different, but I think that the things that she talks about in this video are universal for people who are strictly creating content. Specifically, yes. a lot of you here tend to be in the same niche as me as that DIY, um, creativity, home decor, things like that, maybe lifestyle a little bit. So I think there's still stuff to glean. So don't shut down yes. if you're like, I'm never going to sell a course or be a coach or be a mentor. There are so many great things to learn from this. So don't, don't check out. And of course, at the end of the episode, what are we going to be talking about? Uh, stay tuned till the end when we talk about our favorite things. Yeah. And one of the favorite things that we had, we were fighting over. I was like, wait, I was going to share that one. She's like, no, I'm sharing it. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just share it. <laughs> so stick around for that. Always talking about our favorite things at the end of the episode. So I think, okay, I think that's enough of a backstory. Should we play mm -hmm. this little clip? Just to give you guys a little bit more context, if you don't know who Vanessa is, this will introduce her and then she will also show you kind of how she scaled her business. Is that, hey, there is a cap to this. And so what I did to scale up was I decided to package everything that I was teaching my clients and more 
into a course and that course was called the boss Graham Academy. Now it was really successful. When I first launched it, I made $200,000 and I posted this video of myself literally crying to strangers on the internet because this was the most money that I had ever made in my entire life. I'm, I'm so honored and happy to announce that my business has officially hit six figures today. Okay. So here we are. Here's the first like thing that I think happens a lot in content creation. Yeah. I know I have been there. There's a mountaintop where you just reach this spot where you're, where you're like, oh, whether it's like somebody just paid me a thousand dollars to make a reel. Oh my gosh, life is never going to get better than this to, you know, I always had a goal to, I wanted to hit six figures as a content creator. And the first year I hit that it was like, wow, that's so amazing. But as soon as you hit it, like What's that next? high only <laughs> lasts yeah. for maybe a week if you're lucky. And I remember the next year, it's like, well, I want to do, I want to double that. I want to make 200,000. And we did that. And then after that, I was so stuck in that hustle cycle train that I don't even think I had a goal for the next year. But then we surpassed that and we hit over 300,000. I think it was like $330,000. And Maggie's right here along for those, those mountain highs. And we were our whole, I don't want to say our whole worth because it wasn't. I, but, I think I didn't give enough credit to how much that was fueling me. Um, we talk a lot on here about our faith and I can say, oh, I'm enrooted in Jesus and I'm enough in Jesus and all those things. And I know those things to be true, but I necess I was not necessarily living that out. I didn't know how much of an idol like that next thing, that next thing had gotten to me. And, you know, we went through a whole last year where it was down. <laughs> it was down from that 300,000. And it's even down even more this year. And I have had some things taken away that they're like, it's something else is going to have to happen for me to get even anywhere close to, you know, being being at six figures or over six figures this year. And it really shows you where, <laughs> where you're putting your hope and where you're putting that worth. And so, and I think her whole story is going to go into that. I might be jumping the gun a little bit, but those moments, while they are so great and they are so awesome they don't last very long. They don't. They fade out. But it also raises that question of, you know, should we not want the more then? Should, I mean, when you're running a business, I guess it's natural to want to do better every year, every quarter. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's a really kind of a gray area when, when are we crossing over to the line to where that's the most important thing. Does that yeah. make sense? It does make sense. And I'm not going to say I'm only driven by money and the views and all those things, but it is very hard because that's what everybody tells you matters. It's very mm -hmm. measurable comparing it to comparing yourself to other creators. And that's the next section that we're going to move in that it's just very easy to be like, well, I made more money than this person or I had more views than this person and using that to like lift yourself up instead of just like, what did I tackle or what did I, or what am I going to do with that money? Like, how am I going to bless other people? How am I going to bless my family? It just, when it becomes that status symbol of, okay, I'm attaching my worth to how much I brought in last year or how many brand deals I had or how many views I'm getting or how many viral pieces of content. It's just a very dangerous p place to live. And I know that, like, I know better, but I still can see myself getting caught in that trap over the past three years as I, or however, since 2019, since I've been full time yeah. as it grew. And those beginning days when it's growing are the best days. So don't be like wishing for, oh, I want to be like where Christina is. And I want this to be a full time thing because the best, most pure days are in the beginning when you don't have anything yeah. because you're really operating from a place you're operating from a place of nothing and no, you know, status and stuff like yeah. that. So it is the most pure time that that you're creating. And that's where your brand is being birthed and built. And so like, I'm almost going backwards into like, I want to channel more of 2019 Christina. And that's a lot of what Vanessa mm -hmm. says in this video. So I think we're ready to play the next section, which is called the comparison trap. Here's the first trap that I found myself in. And that was the comparison trap. Because you would think that it was awesome meeting all these people, but truthfully, when I met these people, especially in real life, that was the height of my imposter syndrome. There's one thing to compare yourself to people on social media. There's another to actually meet them in real life and realize that, wow, they're dope. 
Like they're doing a lot of cool things. And so to paint the picture for you, I met people like Jasmine Starr, who I've looked up to for a really long time. I, love I learned Starr. that she was building software, which is so <laughs> cool. I met Cody Sanchez when I first met her. She didn't even have a YouTube channel. And she told me that she actually started her YouTube channel after hearing my talk and realizing that she was missing out on an opportunity not being on YouTube. And soon enough, because she's so smart, she scaled up to a whole content team and now her channel has completely surpassed mine. She's crushing it. I met Layla Hormozzi. You all know the Hormozis. They acquire businesses. I met YouTubers that have over a million subscribers. I also was in a room full of people that were making millions of dollars a month thanks to their masterminds. And so what I learned... Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been in rooms like that, so I've only no. feel, felt like a piece of that. But she's like with Alex Hermosi, Jasmine Starr I've loved for such a long time and she's kind of a OG on here uh, you know helping creators out if you guys haven't ever heard of her I definitely advise you to check her out but sitting there talking about being in a mastermind being in a room of 30 to 50 people that are making what'd she say a million dollars a month yes some of them oh making my millions of lord dollars. have mercy the pressure y'all I'm fine over here in my, <laughs> my little DIY content creator niche that's wild I know don't you find it interesting that from the outside looking in to us she was hugely successful mm -hmm. making millions of dollars a year going into a room with people who are doing even more and still falling into the comparison trap we yeah. think in our minds oh if i can just get to this place then i won't feel have these feelings of comparison and an inadequacy, which is an inadequacy. Just... And when I achieve this, I won't yeah. feel this way. And that's she's telling us that's not necessarily true. Yeah. And even and it was it was almost I'm sure here's the thing. Okay. So it motivates you because you can see what's possible and you sure. get really excited and you see what people are doing well and you're like, okay, how can I implement that for myself? But at the same time, it's just you're always gonna be there's always going to be somebody above you. Yes. And can you be okay and be comfortable with that? Or can does that make that? you anxious yeah. thinking like, I, and it doesn't sound like her goal was to be number one. No. It almost sounds like there's this unworthiness. Like I'm not worthy to be in this room. Mm -hmm. How did I get here? I got to keep this going. Like yeah. that striving. Those are the kind of the things that I'm picking up little nuances in what she's saying. Yeah. Or almost, you know, that spark, that, ignites in you that oh my gosh I'm not doing enough I need to do more mm -hmm. that even magnifies a hustle mentality a performance mentality of oh my goodness I need to do even more and I'm not doing this here and I think the message that I took from it is just how important it is to be comfortable in your lane to stay in your lane right like yeah. Success looks different for every mm -hmm. person, and it, how it, do we know what our lane is, though? How do we know? <laughs> yeah, how do you? Yeah, how do we know? Where I think you go back to your why, yeah. why you started, and mm -hmm. what and we're going to talk. I don't want to jump ahead, but we're going to talk later about what she talks about her core values. I think you have to be anchored yeah. in that. Yes. And I and I will tell you this because I know I know that I have core anchors for my pretty distress brand. Like I know what they are. But am I do I sometimes lose focus on them yeah. because you see the dollar signs? Dollar signs are so easy to chase, y'all. Yes. And I'll just use a personal example. I am a part of, you know, she she talks about masterminds and things like that. I have really seen the value of networking and believe in the power of networking and not necessarily just to, you know, what can I get out of other people? But I like encouraging people. There were people that held my hand in the beginning. To this day, there are still people that answer questions for me for free. So when I have that ability, when I have that space, I make that room so that people can stand on my shoulders so they don't have to start from the ground up so that that my, what's that saying? So that my ceiling can be their floor. I think that's super powerful. And I'm, I'm just here by the grace of God. I'm not here by me being special or anything like that. So I love helping other people. So I am part of different groups and things. I have a group on GroupMe that I've recently joined that's been so helpful. That's creators just like me, all different sizes from people to 15,000 followers to 500,000 followers. And I had a gal that got on and was talking to us about Amazon and told us all the things that she's doing on Amazon. Well, she only has 
I say only. She has 180,000 followers or something like that. Probably half of what I have, but she is making like $17,000 a month on Amazon. And she said that was a bad month for her. <laughs> so in that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, like I want to learn all these things from her. Like, what is she doing? Like, what can I implement? But at the same time, that unworthiness crept in of, I'm not doing enough. Like, she's so great and I'm terrible. And so you have to come into those groups and those spaces with a good self, like what you're saying, like a sense of self and like, why am I doing this? Or you can just be like a little rabbit and chasing mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. little thing that comes your way because it does look shy, bright. $17,000 a month on Amazon? I sold. I'm in. What do I need to do? But then that pulls my focus away from the things that I'm really good at. Yeah. And ma am I ever going to make $17,000 a month on my YouTube? Uh, my my uh, like history would say not. <laughs> Just my content alone. My history would say no. But I don't know. But maybe that but maybe that has to be enough. Maybe I'm not called to make $17,000 a month right. on Amazon. I don't know. So these are the things that we are scared to talk about because out in the world, it would be like, well, if you're not making more money, then you're not enough. Yeah. And I think Vanessa kind of comes to, she's someone who made $8 million in one year. Yeah. And she walked away, you guys. So I don't know. I think we have some to learn. I know. I think we, <laughs> we're jumping ahead of we're, ourselves. I know. Because, it's hard because we watched it twice. And so we're, yeah. all, we're so excited. So we should watch this next clip so that we can kind okay, of Okay. We're going to we're gonna reel it back in. So where she goes from the comparison trap is the self-induced pressure that she has put onto herself with this juggernaut that her business, this $8 million a year business has become. Was pressure that I created in my head. And so I'm not blaming anyone that I met. I'm not blaming any mentor. I'm not blaming any clients. I'm not blaming anyone but myself of putting me through that pain and through that unrealistic standard. It was just me self sabotaging or me just going through it as you can hear from the video and so we're just playing you little snippets so if you want any more detail if you want to watch this whole video it's 40 minutes long it is worth the watch we've watched it twice so go yeah. in and hear those little nitty-gritty details of her story but basically she's talking about you know she's in these masterminds with people making a million dollars a month and she's like okay well that's what i need to do yeah and she scaled, she was hiring people, she had salespeople out there selling her course, uh, she was having to, so not only is she front facing now, but she's having to be a manager on the back end. She's hiring all these consultants and stuff to keep helping her grow, grow, grow. But I guess maybe she never asked herself, like, why do I want to do this? So she yeah. had put all this self pressure on herself. But before she entered into scaling the business and making it into this juggernaut, she didn't really ask herself, do I want this? She was just doing it because everybody around her, that's what they were doing. Yeah, which I think is so interesting because we can really be our own worst enemies sometimes. And I feel like we talked a little bit about this um, with Aaron, mm -hmm. Live Pretty on a Penny, about how we can look at what everyone else is doing and think, well, the, then I should, I should be, be doing, doing it. it too, right? And then jump into something and get ahead of ourselves. And like she's saying, we get to this point where she's stressed out and wondering, how did I get here? What am I doing this? What's it all for? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's really interesting. And again, goes back to kind of, okay, what's my lane? What am I good at? What mm -hmm. do I enjoy? Mm -hmm. Because making money is great and all of this, but if you find yourself in a place similar to her where people's livelihoods are now reliant on your success and your hustle and it's not even something that you really want or enjoy, yeah. it can lead to kind of a hard place. It, yeah, I and know. and if you don't do those checks along the way, yeah. then you get to a point where you have to completely shut down. Yeah. I feel like that year, you know, when we came to the end of that year where I made three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Granted, that's just what I brought in revenue. You guys, I'm not going to go into expenses and how much I actually paid and how much I saved and whatever. We'd be here for another thirty minutes, yeah. but I was miserable, yes, stressed yeah. out. At the end of my rope, felt like I was you know, failing in a lot of outside areas in that had nothing to do with business, felt successful, but felt completely burned out. And, mm -hmm. and I was not happy. Yeah, <laughs> I was not happy. And I said, what can we change? And I think that next year was a year of balance. Um, but then that what that year 
since I pulled back and was doing less and wasn't trying to shove so much stuff in each month. And um, I was only able to do that much stuff because I scaled because I brought on contractors to help. Maggie helped me a lot, probably like what, 10 hours of work a week plus video shoots. I also hired a videographer that was helping me shoot and edit one video a month. So it was like taking stuff off my plate, but we were doing that so we could pack in more Instagram partnerships, more TikTok partnerships. I mean, it was full. My Like Maggie was on top of like, we need to order this. We need to be shooting this. Like my calendar was full, full, full. There was no room to be going for coffee for people, um, for spending time with my family. I mean, I would spend time with my family on weekends, but I was just, I was booked and I was burnt out. And so that next year was like, okay, let's scale back. Let's pull things back. We know we're going to make less money, but I need to find balance. Um, but that kind of revealed to me where my heart was. And my heart was very attached to, I made this much money. Don't you want to know how I did it? And not like, I'm not saying, I'm just being honest. I'm being honest because I've had to repent of this a lot that I made the thing, the thing and the money, the thing, even though I know it's not, um, but yeah, money is important. Like, why would I wake up and do a job every day if I wasn't going to make a career and earn money out of it? But I have just learned that it's it's okay to not have like these big numbers. It's okay if you don't even make six figures doing this. If you're just doing it to like supplement your family, then you don't need six figures. You don't need seven figures. Um, I have just found because of where my husband is and the way he provides for our family, I don't have to hustle. And like going back to that core of why did I ever do this in the beginning? Because I wanted to show people that you could have a beautiful home and you didn't have to have thousands of dollars to go to restoration hardware and, you know, pottery bar. And like, I'm never gonna be able to afford that stuff in my house. So I was showing people how you can make stuff your own, work with your hands, uh, which I think is great therapy for your mind. Even if you don't ever sell, even if you don't even put it up in your house, like just to do something with your hands to have something that's your own, especially in the season that I was in as being a mother. So I think I'm kind of refocusing and going back to the beginning of like what motivated me in the first place when there was no money coming in. Yeah. Um, And I think it's a healthier balance between those things because to just say, oh, I'm just going to do it for the joy of it and I don't care about the money. Well, that's not realistic either. Yeah. But again, like, and seeing this happen to other creators who has been so successful on YouTube, there's tons of YouTubers that are quitting this year. And I think they're just doing what Vanessa did last year. She was a, tr- she was a trendsetter. Okay. And she learned a lot on her, her sabbatical, her time away, like rest and sabbaticals mm-hmm. in business are important. And the world would tell you don't ever stop and don't ever take time off because then you're going to lose your momentum. If, but if you lose your momentum and you get more clarity for longevity, that is going to be like gold in the end. So I just relate to everything she's saying. And maybe you can speak to that because you've seen me go through it. And then I can speak to your business too, because your business changed as well. I just, I find myself wondering, can we release, we have to go through it to learn it, right? Yeah. Sometimes. Can't, I mean. Fully, yes. Fully, yes. But to see other people do this, to see what Vanessa's done and then what her next chapter is, It can be like a little warning post to you. It's like, hey, do these heart checks every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that I get way more excited about the $10,000 check for a reel I made. Or did I get more excited when somebody reached out and said, hey, like you really inspired me to do this and you helped my mental health and you saved my life. Like we need to be weighing both. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I just (laughs) I, I definitely think there's something to learn from watching somebody else's experience. But Part of me thinks sometimes we just got to walk you know, through some things. And have, gra- have grace for yourself, too, yeah, in the process. We can say all we want, like, okay, these are my values. This is my core why. Why am yeah. I doing this? But I don't think we can kind of have authority over it until we have walked through it. I mean, you yeah. knew in your mind money isn't the goal. Mm-hmm. But then when you're in the middle of it, it's like that push and pull of like, oh, but maybe, but maybe like, my heart is tied there. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know that I would, that's just kind of what I was thinking as you were talking. And I wonder for Vanessa too, like she had to go through this whole process mm-hmm. to, to learn as part of growing, as part of maturing. Yeah. Um, I don't think we can just avoid all the like hard lessons in the middle. 
Okay, so the next segment we want to play you um, is about, I think we've kind of already been discussing it, but it's the identity trap. At the beginning of the video, you already know that I ended up leaving and I did end up taking that break. And so what exactly was the straw that broke the camel's back? Because now I'm talking about how I couldn't stop and had felt so much pressure, but I kept moving and I kept pushing. Well, the reason why I actually decided to have finally the courage to stop everything was I just no longer felt like it was an integrity for me to keep things running the way that I was doing it. I found myself caught in, I guess, the last trap, and that is the identity trap. I mentioned this countless times in this video. I just realized I just didn't know who I was anymore. I couldn't find me in my business anymore. For example, when I looked at my content, honestly, all I could see was freaking Alex from Mosey. Because at some point in the game, he was an up and comer. Now he's huge, but he was kind of like the standard for how your reels and how your content should look like. And so I edited my videos to be just like Alex's. Even if you look at like my quote posts and stuff, it looks like Dan Coe's because Dan Coe was an up and coming creator and now is huge. And so I always felt like I needed to replicate other people's success instead of recognizing that I'm paving my own path and that I have my own identity. Okay. I feel like we've already, you know, kind of delved yeah, into this a little stop. bit, but she was so far in, she okay. felt like she couldn't stop. When I got to the end of my rope, kind of at that big year that we had, I knew something was wrong. And I had the ability to be like, well, I'm just going to slow down and scale back because it was easier because I wasn't attached to having all these mastermind people that had paid thousands of dollars that are my clients that I have to serve them. You know, I had some brand partnerships in the hopper, but I was like, I don't have to sign any more on top of those. So mine was easier to scale back. But I see here she's trapped in this huge machine where she's employing lots of people. I've only had contractors and that's hard enough to like when I've had to go to Megan and be like, hey, I have to cut your hours down. I recently had to make a decision that I can't work with my videographer this year just because of the way my income has shifted this year. And that was a very hard conversation for me to have. He's a contractor, so he's not relying on my W-2 like for his job, but like it was still a steady thing that we had been doing for two years. And that was a devastating phone call for me to have to make. And I just miss them and I'm going to miss him making those videos. But so there was a little bit of, so I understand a little bit of her pressure, but of like having a whole team and people that being their full-time salary, like, oh my gosh, I don't think I, I think I know I never yeah. want that. That seems really overwhelming. That would be a huge responsibility. I can understand why it took her a while to finally walk away because that would be, I, I just can't imagine having the weight of responsibility of people's salaries people who had paid you large sums of money um, for a service. And then you come to a point where you realize, I don't even like this. This isn't me. I've lost Yeah, and that was a I huge am. thing too. Like if you were having fun doing it still, oh, great. Sure. Um, I think a lot of us look at, you know, like the Danny Austin who has her own skincare line. You know, we look at Haley Bieber. We look at all these people that are basically corporations now. And you have to decide, do I really want that? I know a lot of people in my industry, they have retired their husbands. It, it's just a it's just a term. It's not like a real thing. But their husbands work for them full time. And the way I'm structured, maybe I have the capability to be a big corporation like that and create my own paint line and things like that. But I know I don't have the structure in place for that. And my husband loves what he does. And my husband is so good at what he does. And we don't work well together. We don't. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. If you can work with your husband, that's great. But again, so it just shows like we're all wired differently. And so if you're looking from the right to the left to get vision for your business, I just think it's it's a dangerous thing because, you know, looking at these big things that are so successful, that's great. But maybe I don't have capacity for that. And like you said, you only learn that as you're walking it out. And when you start getting these triggers, like she's talking about being like, yes, I'm at this place, but I am not enjoying it, that's probably a key sign that something's wrong, that you maybe need to do a little heart check and say, why am I feeling this way? Right. Yeah. And when you, when she talks about, and this kind of goes into the next segment we're about to watch, she started looking at her content and saying, I'm not even, where am I at in this? Because she is so outwardly focused yeah. on what her responsibilities, what other people are doing, that she got to a point and this is I think why she calls it the identity trap is she's like I don't even see myself yeah in my content anymore and I I think that that is a trap that is easy for people to follow 
fall into Mm -hmm, because we want to follow what's successful (laughs) we want to follow a successful model but there is more than one way there is more than one way to be successful yeah and it means different things to different people so i guess that's where we have to decide what it means and what it looks like for us yeah and so here's what happened to vanessa and she calls this mentorship overload i realized i couldn't see myself anymore was I just worked with so many mentors and consultants. I was working with Sam Ovens, who was helping me with the mastermind, and I followed his blueprint of starting a mastermind. But when I looked at the mastermind, all I could see was Sam Ovens. And I love the guy. He's amazing. He's so smart. One of the best mentors I've ever had. But all I could see was Sam Ovens. (laughs) Um, When I looked at my YouTube channel, at one point, I hired a consultant, Drew Hitchcock. He helped me look at my analytics and a b test things on my channel to the point where some of these thumbnails were not even my creation were not even from me and my team it was his team a b testing a bunch of things and seeing what worked and seeing what didn't work every week we would have a meeting and he would critique my videos and tell me what i needed to tweak because remember at that point i was so like stressed and i had so many things on my plate that i needed and i relied heavily on coaches and consultants this is just wild to me because it sounds like a dream oh my gosh you have a youtube consultant telling you pick this thumbnail or don't do this thumbnail testing the ab giving you all the stats of like this is what worked this what did that sounds like a dream to me and it actually was killing her on the inside as a creator yeah i i found this section so interesting because Everybody wants a mentor and so many people would die. Oh, I want a mentor so bad in so many areas of my to life. To be mentored by these people she's mentioning. Yeah. And yet I find it so interesting that she says she got so caught up in what they thought would be successful that she lost the uniqueness and value that she brought mm-hmm. to the space. And I think there's something to be said for that. I don't think mentorship is bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I think We also have to recognize that there's something unique and valuable that we each, each individual person brings to the table. And it's not always going to look like a blueprint of what someone else has done. This is such a valuable thing for me to be hearing from her right now, because I recently just signed up for a mentorship program for someone we're going to be having on the podcast soon. And she's amazing. (laughs) Stefana Silver, because I had a goal that I wanted to grow in affiliate marketing this year. And I've seen her speak before and the proof is in the pudding. She is really good at it. Um, Now I'm going into these mentorships with her with the mindset of what can I take what she's doing and make it work for me? Not what can I do to exactly copy her and put it up and see if it works? Would that work? It probably would. Maybe. It actually probably would because I've seen a lot of people just kind of copy her and they're doing fine. But what? how would my soul feel about that? Yeah, it probably would start to get to me after a while because I'm not I I am about you're uniquely made. Mm -hmm. You're uniquely made. You have your own fingerprint. You have your own DNA. There is nobody like you. And if I really believe that there's enough room for everybody in the creator space, I have to believe it's because we're individuals and we all have something Mm -hmm. special to share. So this is a good lesson for me to be hearing. And it's like, yes, I can see, see Stefana's success and hear all the things that she's saying, but I have to take what works for me and leave behind what I feel like doesn't or what I feel like doesn't resonate with my audience, what I feel like would be too much for my audience. I have to take care of my audience. I have to take care of my people that have been riding with me since 2018 when I was nobody. And I'm still, you know, I'm not, not that I think I'm somebody, but they were with me when they had, I don't know, like I owe it to them. Like that's why I'm here. That's who I have built a career on It are these people that have spent their time with me. So it's just a good lesson for me that a mentorship doesn't mean follow the person and look like the person like take what glean what you can and leave behind what doesn't work for you and don't lose yourself in that mentorship because it seems like that's what happened to Vanessa yes yeah and I don't know I I think we have to get away from looking at everything as so formulaic and like linear yeah uh, there's so much safety in that though Meg. there there <laughs> is but you know we can look at her yeah and she was so successful before she oh, even yeah. had mentors. That's um, true. So it just, where do we get lost? Where do we lose like that first love? I mean, yeah. for lack of a better term or, or the why we started and why do we think at some point, like what the uniqueness and value and success that we've had isn't enough. All right. So again, and we've already talked about this. So she just kind of got to the end of her rope. 
And it was because she felt like I'm not an in, there's no integrity in what I'm doing right now. So we're going to play a little clip where she talks about her integrity. My mastermind, I felt hella out of integrity running it because I felt like I was just basically teaching people a thing that I really disliked about my business. The fact that it was scaled up so much. Yes, I was making a lot of money, but I was also not very happy. And so it felt super out of integrity running that mastermind. And when it came to my course, the Boss Graham Academy, the course that earned me the millions uh, that I was able to achieve in that short period of time, it honestly, when I looked at it, it felt like I was looking at 2019 Vanessa. I am no longer that same person that started that course, yet I was continuing running it. Okay. So what do we think about that? It's just kind of more, just more information for you. I feel like we've kind of already talked through it, yeah. but she just... it. It wasn't bringing her happiness anymore, which is kind of a word that I'm not. I don't think that happiness is the goal in life, but I know a lot of people do. Um, I don't know, because you don't, if you're happy all the time, are you learning anything? I think that the, the mountains and the valleys are where we learn season. For sure. I don't know. I think a better word is like, I wasn't balanced. For me, that kind of, I don't know about that happiness word, just... What is happiness? <laughs> to me, uh, it sounds more like she really felt like it was an inauthentic thing for her to be doing. Okay. That she's teaching other people how to scale their businesses and she's thinking to herself, but I hate that my business is scaled. I hate that I'm in this yeah. spot. I don't, I'm not like, this isn't good for me. It doesn't yeah. feel good. And so it feels like very inauthentic and to be teaching other people to do this when I yeah. don't feel good about it. Yeah. Like God. So well, I and I think I that. misunderstood her because she started talking about how her course reflected 2019 her and it didn't reflect her today her. And I was like, oh, that's different than what I thought. I watched earlier. So see, this is why you need to watch things over and over again. Like I'm trying to get back to more of how I was back in the day. And she's actually saying, no, I've actually grown past that point and I need to create something new. Because yeah. this doesn't make sense anymore, which which is understandable because she's doing a course, she's doing education, and she has so much more education now Yeah. that looking back at her course that she's still selling, she's probably like, I don't even have those thoughts anymore, but yeah. I'm still selling it because it's selling and it's working. Yeah. So that's, a. am glad this is why you watch things two or three times, guys. <laughs> but she's also recognizing, like, I can see why she would say the 2019 version of me isn't me anymore because look at how much she's learned no, about yeah. what she thought was the right way mm -hmm. and now she's in this totally different place so I can understand her thought process behind it not being of integrity to keep doing it yeah, because but, she's not happy and she's, she's selling happiness to people and she's yeah. like if I'm sitting here being like do this and do all these things and you'll be successful and you'll be happy it's like there's a you will be successful but She's saying, I'm successful and I'm not happy. So there's some disconnect there. So she feels like there's a lack of integrity in her product, which yeah. makes sense. And it sounds like she's just having, she had a real gut check. Of yeah. Like, oh man, something doesn't feel right about this. Well, and bless her because some people would just ignore that and keep getting millions exactly. of dollars. I know. Yes. I mean, that would be hard. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it'd be so easy to be like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be full of integrity and just like forget these millions of dollars that I'm making. <laughs> I think a lot of people would be like, yeah, this sucks, but I'll just take the million I'll dollars keep pushing. And, <laughs> and I'll go have a tequila at night and maybe I'll feel better. So, yeah. I mean, kudos to her for recognizing, hey, something's like off. Oh. And if you watch the video, she goes into like how her health declined and she was stress eating, not working out, not taking care of her body and how it's kind of like all connected. So, yes. yeah, more details if you go watch it on your own. Yeah. All right. What are we moving into next? The lesson of enoughness. The lesson. Of, let's just watch and then we'll come in. <laughs> A lot of time to reflect, as you can tell from this video, but I also had a lot of time to spend with my loved ones. And through that process of just living life without the pressure of social media, I was able to learn a really valuable lesson. And that is I am enough. I am dope. I am cool. I've done cool. I am awesome. And it took me a year of being off of social media to realize that. And this is Okay, I like this because me too. it's really easy for us to say that term. I'm enough. Mm -hmm. But she's saying it took me a year, a year off to learn that I was enough. So it's one thing to say it, but it's one thing to actually learn it and believe it. Does that make sense? It does. 
And it makes me wonder where along the way she got the message or felt like she wasn't enough. Well, she wasn't enough? Yeah. I think it's from that comparison trap. The and comparison the, yeah. and just that feeling of I need to achieve more. Yeah. I need to do more. I need to perform. And then actually being there and performing at a very high level and being like, I feel like crap. Why do I feel like crap? Wow. Yeah. So it's a very powerful lesson. And for me, I hope that in her future videos, since she has been off YouTube for a year and she's back now and she's got this whole new focus, which we're going to talk about later in the video. I hope we she dives more into this story mm -hmm. of what happened in this year. Yeah. Because that sounds like there's a lot of in between. Yeah. <laughs> in that year, that yes. a lot of in between the blanks that I want her to fill in. I'm I can, I believe that she's had this revelation, but I'm excited to see what that revelation actually looks like. And we were talking about this a little bit pre-show. Um, I understand this statement, but I understand it in a different way. And it wasn't from like family and friends telling me enough. It's from Jesus telling me I'm enough. And um, I've always been a person of like striving and pushing. And in this over this past like three years, he's just really been working on my heart of telling me why he loves me. And mm -hmm. and it's not anything that I do. And so being able to receive that love from Jesus, I know a lot of you might not understand that, but my faith is very important to me. Um, if you don't get that, I hope that you have friends and family in your life and people that can speak into your life and let you know that you're enough. But I know that's not the case for everybody. Some people have very dysfunctional families. Some people don't have a lot of friends. So if that, like, if that's your story, I'm just like wondering where are you going to get that message of you're enough? I guess you could get it from us. I think you're enough. Yes. Like, I love <laughs> you. I think you're enough. But for me, I know that was that was my journey because you guys know what like a important role in faith is to both me and Maggie and our stories. Yeah. And so I would love to know down in the comments, like if you've been through this journey of I'm enough, like where you find that source. Um, if you, you know, follow some other faith based thing or whatever, wherever you found it, I would love to know your story and where you got there. Because for me, like the only thing that makes sense is Jesus. Yeah. And we were kind of talking about that. I'm like, how do we share that? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I think that, is kind of the the message that I took from this enoughness is she had to find like where her anchor was. What yeah. was that thing? What is she rooted in? She could go back to what is her foundation and mm -hmm. and for me, yes, that is Jesus. But for some, for her, it was going back to friends and family, people who could speak life over her. Yeah, and I guess for anyone listening, I just want to encourage you to kind of reflect and think oh what is that for me like if it isn't friends and family you know it whatever that is is it you, your belief system is mm -hmm. it the value you bring to everything it could be so many things um but I just I feel like people just need to know you're so valuable and you're worthy and if you can just anchor yourself in that I think it saves people yeah a lot of hard lessons. Well, and learned. go on the journey and look for it. And yeah, the reason that sure. I came to like my worth has to be found in Jesus is because I tried to find it everywhere else. And yes. none of those things worked for me. Like, I love her story. It's beautiful that her friends and family were able to show her that. But mine couldn't. And it's not because they're bad people. It just didn't work for me. I tried. Ev Trust me, you guys. Yeah. I And maybe we'll get into that in a late, in a different podcast. But I tr I searched the world for everything. And the thing that has brought me that enoughness is Jesus's love. It's the only thing that has worked for me. So I hope you find that thing that works for you. And let's have that discussion down in the comments. I'd love to have that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, oh my gosh, we're almost to the end of the video. Yes. So what is very cool about this whole journey she's been on and finding that she's enough is that she has completely realigned what her brand is, what her journey is, what her mission is. And I think she still wants to make money. So we don't all just have to, you know, <laughs> just abandon the thought of throwing money. So we're going to go over. She has these new core principles. So she's going to do a brief introduction about that. And then we're going to pause in between each core principle. There's four of them because I want to talk about each of them in detail. But yeah. I want her to give you the context. So we'll pause in between and just talk about them because I think they're awesome. Yes. And let's not steal her core values. We all need our own core yes. values. Yes. But they're good, so it might give you a starting point. That being said, what is next for me? Well, if it isn't obvious enough, I still want to create. I still want to be a part of this creator economy and, you know, share content that is helpful for creators like myself. Uh, I no longer really have 
content pillars and instead I have core principles that my life revolves around but also I have a feeling my content is going to revolve around. So for example, the four core pillars that I have is to feel good. I really prioritize my wellness and my health now and also my sense of being. And so I can see me sharing how I'm doing that in hopes that maybe you can find balance in your life. Okay, so first of all, we just got to talk about going from content pillars, pillars which is I'm assuming course mastermind, like all the ways yeah. you can make money. It's like I'm thinking like these are the core things that hold up my business that bring in. But basically, I'm thinking of them as an income stream. So you think I'm well, interpreting I that think right? It, the idea of content pillars is a theory in social media that you have to set up your content pillars and then every bit of messaging and content that you put out must fall within these, whether it's education. Okay. Um See, this is why she's a consultant, Coaching not just a content and creator flopping I'm around. I'm trying to think of what else. Her, hers were probably something like education, coaching, and I don't know. Okay, so like, every piece of content she puts out needs to, to be one of those pillars. Needs to fall under these So pillars. you could never post, I really like this lip gloss because that's not anything that's involved no, in her no. pillars. This, and this okay. is, I, I think that this, this is the niche down yes, it model. Is. Yes, it okay. is. And I think we're really moving away from yeah. that. And so it sounds like that's really what she learned in her last year is how beneficial it is to not niche down quite so much. Well, see, I didn't have enough mentors, so I never learned that I needed content pillars. So here <laughs> we are. I don't have to break down my content pillars. I just need to go back to my core values, which I already had. And that's yeah. what that's OK. So this is helping me. See, different journey. Everybody has a different yes, journey, but we can all true. learn something, even though it's not exactly the same. Okay. So now after all of that, what was her first thing? It was she wanted to be healthy. Yes. To okay. feel good. To feel good. To feel good. I I just have to say, I love the idea of having core principles instead of content pillars. I, I think know. the messaging is so different and it really brings, I, I think your personal, it, it falls in line with building community and making connection mm -hmm. with people because it's elements of yourself that you highly value in your everyday life. So her first one is feeling good. In her year off, she realized how much she had neglected to take care mm -hmm. of her body, soul, spirit, her personal well-being. And, you know, we always say we can't pour out of an empty cup. So I think this is such an excellent yeah. first pillar because you can't be running a business and pouring out to other people if you aren't taking care of you. Yeah, your well. business can't survive on Taco Bell and Chick-fil-A. And I stress eat a lot. So this yeah. was an eye opener for me. It's like, OK, when I'm going for food again, let me do a heart check. Why do I feel like I need these French fries? Why do I feel like I need this Coke to make me feel better? Why do I feel bad? <laughs> so or are you... And prioritizing. Having, having trouble having falling time. asleep at night because yeah. your mind is spinning about a piece of work that you need to get done or something that happened or, you know, it's yeah. little things, prioritizing mm -hmm. sleep, your mental health. Getting out in the sun, maybe taking yeah. a walk around the block instead yeah. of just sitting at my computer all day. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. Yeah. All right. All right. We're ready for what's our, Yeah, our what's our next one? Wait, are these pillars? No, they're core, core values. values. Core principles. Core principles. Core principles. <laughs> I want to have fun. I want to share more aspects of my life, more aspects to myself. So it doesn't always feel like I'm trapped in a niche. And instead, I'm able to share my interests freely to my audience. And again, I would love to share my process of how I'm doing that with you guys. Okay, she wants to have fun. I'm, have I'm fun. down. Yes. <laughs> I am down. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, this is really neat to me because she's, I felt like the impression that I got in her content from the beginning leading up to now was business, business, business. Yeah. Those core pillars, focus, 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 bring in money. And now she's really learning the value yeah. of bringing yourself and your personality. Yeah. And, and just see her likes. laugh and like and run yeah. around and she's like trying Have fun. Food and dance. Like, yeah. Like, and she showed, you know, her LTK, which I thought was interesting. So she's going to share items she likes. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. Which I think she's a gorgeous girl and she's cute. And, you know, I like her sweatshirt. So it makes sense to me. Yeah. And even, even if you're not on any of those things, like I, I, this is why we have our favorite things section. We enjoy sharing. I love that blazer. Where'd you get it from? I love those earrings. We just, it, 
makes us feel good and it's fun and we do it with our friends. So why would we not do it with you? You guys are our friends. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think again, like all of these core principles are helping her to go deeper Mm -hmm. and build community and create connection rather than just transactional relationships. Mm -hmm. And she talks at the very end, and I don't know if we'll show this part or not, how she's really getting into that mindset that every one of these 700,000 followers is a person. And she talks a little bit about how in the beginning, she just viewed numbers. I want more, 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 Mm -hmm. more followers. And now she's actually thinking like, no, those are 700 bodies. Yeah, they're souls. And so yeah. I, I really, I like that mindset switch and how these core principles kind of are going to help her create the connection with, yeah. the, with each one of those people. So that's yeah. cool. Very cool. Okay. Next one. I want to do less. You know, my path to success was so complicated. It used to be simple, but then it got complicated over time. And so I really want to share an easier way to doing content creation, to starting an online business, to being a creator. And so I'm really excited to share my lessons on that as I document my journey of simplifying. And I also... Okay, that's awesome. And I just feel like I just always want to do less. So that's why it's agreed <laughs> with my spirit, but I've never done as much as she done. So I should just bring my, humble myself a little bit. But I love how... You know, the career economy is real and it's only growing. It's not going anywhere. It's such a fun, it is really fun, you guys. And it the sky is the limit on it and you can personalize it and tailorize it to whatever you want it to be. And I don't want you to get stuck in this trap of I have to post 10 reels a day. I have to post this time a day. I have to da 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 because it sucks the joy out of it. And But when it comes down to it, I love being a creator. I cannot believe this is my job. I can't believe I've been getting given this opportunity to just create things and put them out in the world and see what happens with them. And when they when these people do become souls that are that are digesting your content and when they say things to you like, I've been following you since 2019 and I just love painting furniture and this is how like it's refreshing to me and it's helped me with my mental illness and this and that, like those things you have, like you have to put weight and value on there because they are attached to a soul. They're attached to a real person. And sometimes it's a hard, it's easy to disconnect from it because you don't get to see those people in person. But if I was able to see that person in person and hear them say that to me eye to eye, like I would hug them and I would cry. And so it's trying to figure out how to create those connections, but it is like a, such a fun thing. And so I don't want you to have to do 20 million seven things to just start and just do it. It's like yeah. what well, we're constantly preaching here. It doesn't have to be so complicated. It doesn't have to be so complicated. It's only as complicated as we choose to make yeah. it, honestly. Yeah. So I love this. I love that she's going to do less. That I think simplify is such a great message. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what we talked about with JC about how people are going back to lo fi content, yeah. talking to their phones. You don't need a huge setup and a fancy camera mm-hmm. to get started. It doesn't have to be complicated. You just get started. Yeah. Yeah. Preaching to ourselves. Oh, yeah. We're constantly sure. preaching to ourselves here. Oh, I dropped my water. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Stanley down. All right. Last core principle. I want to earn not just more, but earn enough. Throughout my time off, I was able to understand what enoughness looked like for me. And I no longer have crazy, crazy huge revenue goals because I know what enough looks like. And in addition to that, while I was away, I learned that, damn, I have such a cool job that has so many different potentials for different revenue streams. And so I want to be able to document my journey of unlocking those revenue streams and showing you guys what that path could look like in order for you to hit your enough number, in order for you to have that enoughness in your business. How can you earn enough to fuel your lifestyle? What does that lifestyle even look like? And what are the different cool revenue streams that you can unlock as a creator? I'm going to let you go first because I just, you know, I could just go on forever. I know. I it's so good. It is so good. But it's also, I think she had to get to the place of earning that much, giving it all away. And I saying mean, that'll never be enough. Like I'm here really? and it doesn't feel enough. Yes, that's because what I was trying to articulate. Our little pea brains would be like, yeah, $8 million would be definitely, sounds great. Let's go. Yes. 
But realizing everything that went along with the $8 million yeah. was kind of an aha moment for her to realize, oh, no, I can do with much with yeah. less than this and it can be enough. Well, and I think what she has come to a real realization at is that if I was there and I know all these people taking my course, the number of them that can get to $8 million is very small. Mm -hmm. So this is more sustainable for more people. So it's yeah. almost like she's basically kind of sacrificing this wealth, this dream to be like, well, you probably aren't going to get here. And maybe that's where that integrity came from her. Maybe that's why she was feeling like she wasn't living in integrity anymore, because she knows this model is more sustainable for more people, that it can be yeah, shared with more people. Um, because we don't all need $8 million. Bless no. you if that's you, but we don't. I know I don't. Yeah. Um, and I didn't even get to anywhere near the scale that she's at, but I am definitely living in this of like, I don't want more. I just want what's enough. And yeah. and she said, and then again, it's a trial and error thing. Like, yeah. what am I trying to sustain? I have a lot of bills that I know that my business pays for. And am I willing to sacrifice those things? Am I willing to sacrifice different areas of my lifestyle, my kids' education, um, where we live, things like that? Um, my daughter's dance competition stuff. <laughs> I'm definitely willing to work for that because I see what it's doing for her. And I see what it's doing for me because it's a beautiful community that I'm part of. So I'm willing to work for that. So that's one thing I know I'm not willing to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, so I just love that. Figuring out like what what lifestyle do you want and what do you need to earn to maintain that instead of the goal? Just be always being like more, 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 more. It's, yeah. so, um, it's just really beautiful. I think so too. I'm so glad we found this video. I'm I so know. glad she's back. Vanessa. If you ever watch this, I hope you do, so you can see just like this is definitely going to have a ripple effect on people in the creator community, um, and I hope it just gives us just I hope it helps where it's you know a place they can stand on your shoulders, and see what you've learned along the way, and just kind of enter in with a healthier mindset of let me do these little checks along the way as I'm growing, yeah. and let me have different checkpoints of my health as opposed to just like what the bottom line is. Yeah. So beautiful. And I hope we're, you know, body, soul, and spirit. For sure. We're all of those things. Yeah. I hope it encourages yeah. people too to kind of just reevaluate, you know, where where am I anchored? What is my identity rooted in? Yeah. What are my core principles and how am I going to adjust my business, my life, my schedule to align with all of those things? Mm -hmm. So I And I do want to just note before you know, we wrap all this up. The reason she could take a whole year off <laughs> is from a place of privilege because yeah. she earned that much money that she could take a whole year off and just shut everything down. You and me, do we have that luxury? We don't. But listen, like, let's take what she has learned in that time because she was appointed that mm -hmm. and let's learn from it and don't be like, well, I can't take a whole year off, so I can't move forward in this. No, like, I believe that God will provide you with mm -hmm. the Sabbath, with the with the rest that you need. I believe that he will multiply your time to figure this out. I believe that he will do those little heart checks with you and help you grow like in small little things. It doesn't have to be this big, huge thing like she did. So it do again, we're, we're preaching it doesn't have to look exactly like hers did, but we can definitely learn so much from this. So much from this. Yes, I feel like we could do so all another podcast on it. I enjoyed uh, watching and learning though more about her journey and mm -hmm. you know I wasn't familiar with her at all before you sent me this video but I feel like now I'm so invested I want to know oh yeah I'm where in. she goes after right. this so it's exciting it's exciting yeah so we'll link the whole video down in the description in case you yeah. guys want to watch the whole thing I definitely recommend that you do to get all the little nuances because we yes, love all the little details yes. for all of all the context and go watch some of her old content because it's really great it is so i'm great. glad that i'm glad that she's back welcome back vanessa um all right favorite things we were fighting over <laughs> what we our favorite fighting things over are our favorite things. so we both have them so you can you get them but i will model them for you yes my favorite things are my amazon earrings <laughs> and i talked about this on our instagram last week but i will continue to shout it from the rooftops all of my earrings and i have three in each year are all from Amazon. Um, we're going to put the link below because there are three different 
brands of earrings, but I keep my earrings in, except for the bottom ones, 24-7. And these top two earrings have been in for over a year. They have not tarnished. They have not turned my ears weird colors or made them itchy and gross. That's wild, and they're so affordable. And they are all under $15, you guys. I have higher-end, more expensive earrings that did not last a year. And what are these called? They're called Huggies. Yes, I do the huggy style so that there's not like a back that you put in because it doesn't get caught on earrings, headphones. I feel like that maybe that's why they're cleaner because they don't, the stuff doesn't gunk up on the back. Yeah, I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I didn't even know they were called Huggies, but Maggie influenced me to get these because you guys probably don't know this about me, but I only wear diamond studs that my husband got me for my anniversary. I didn't even get my ears pierced until I was engaged. So probably like 25, I got my ears pierced for my wedding. I had them pierced when I was like five. And then I was like, I don't like that. So I never wore earrings in high school or college. And so I've only worn studs. And my daughter was like, mom, like you really need to branch out. She wasn't mean like that. (laughs) She's going to be mad if she sees that I was just saying that about her. But Maggie has always recommended these Amazon earrings. So I took her advice. I ordered two pairs that she has and I've gotten compliments on them. And I'm, I'm digging it. Yeah, they look high end. I mean, they do not look. And that's how I found out they were Huggies because somebody came in my DMs and said, Oh, I love Huggies. I'm like, So do I. (laughs) Oh, these are what they're called. They're called Huggies. (laughs) Yeah, so that is my favorite thing. Okay, I'm I'm pulling an audible on mine. I told you something different, but I just realized my blazer that I'm wearing is from Amazon. And this is their lot. They have this line called The Drop, and it just has like really essential basic pieces and so I got this on Amazon when I bought it I bought it for $70 but don't buy it for $70 because it goes on sale all the time so like put a notification on it um, and we'll let you know too but it normally goes on sale anywhere from 40 to 50 bucks and it's a solid blazer it's super cute it's long so it covers up your behind in case you want to wear it with leggings or something tighter just a classic staple to have, you know, in the in the arsenal. It makes you feel a little dressed up to have a little black blazer. I like that the sleeves kind of roll up. You can kind of zhuzh Yeah, you can kind of zhuzh them to make it like more fitted because it is like a longer kind of boxier blazer. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this different format of a podcast. I mean, we just both loved this video from Vanessa so much. We felt like we wanted to talk it out with you guys. We'll leave the link below of where you can find the video of that Vanessa put out as well as her YouTube channel. We'll also put the links for all of our favorite things so you can go shop our Amazon storefront if you would like. And be sure to go follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. We also share lots of our favorite things on the weekly there as yeah. well. And I hope you all have a great day. We'll be back soon with another podcast for you. So we'll see you next time in the Cypress Room. Bye.